Well, good morning. I want to start by uh, first addressing our fans. And I want to say on behalf uh, of the coaching staff, management, and the players, I want to echo Mr. Tannenbaum's apology for our failure to deliver this year. Uh, we had a good first half. Uh, I'll talk more about the season, but uh, we didn't deliver at the end. And uh, I think our fans, we have the best fans in the National Hockey League and all of pro sports, and we need to deliver more. And uh, that loyalty needs to be rewarded. So I want to echo Mr. Tannenbaum's comments to start. If you look at the season, um, I think there are a lot of things we can be excited about as far as going forward. But basically, if you go back to February 6th, at that point, we're in sixth place in the East and chasing the fifth team, actually looking at the schedule to figure out when we could catch the team one spot ahead of us and then catch the next team up above them. And that's when the wheels fell off. And uh, we went into a spiral, uh, didn't come out of it. Um, we have a real young team, and I think that showed. And uh, from then on, it was just a, a slide into a non-playoff position. And uh, we've played partial seasons since I've been here. Uh, and it's time for this team to play a full season, not to play 30 good games or 40 good games or talk about if you combine this half with that half, that's not going to fly anymore. Uh, the product needs to improve for the entire season. Uh, my plan for building this team has not changed. I think making the coaching change and having the coaches in here for an extended period of time is important. So we're not starting from scratch in training camp. Um, my view on how hockey teams are built and how hockey games are won has not changed. Uh, I still believe that uh, big physical teams uh, win hockey games. And if you have two evenly matched teams from a skill perspective, the bigger team's going to win. We need to get bigger. That's my top priority as far as uh, overall priority. Positionally, we have to look at the goaltending. It wasn't good enough this year. Uh, I think that James Reimer is uh, the real deal. I think that we can still plan on him being a number one guy, but we have to look at if we can bring in a guy that gives us more options and more performance right from the get-go next year. The lottery's tonight. Obviously, it's uh, when you're at the draft lottery, it's a it's a nail-biting time, but it's also a time of uh, of you know admitting failure. You're up there for a reason, and um, once that lottery's over, the second it's over, that's when we get to work. We know where we're drafting. Can we move up in the draft? Can we move down in the draft? What can we do? So the work begins the second the lottery's over tonight. Uh, with the draft coming up, obviously our draft position is going to be either one, five, or six. Uh, we're content that we can get a player at that point, uh, and, and with any of those picks, that there is depth in this draft, that we can get a player that will make a difference for us down the road. Maybe not right away. A couple of the players that I've gone and watched in the last couple of weeks are guys that I have high hopes for, but I'm not sure they can play right away. Obviously, with the Marlies, um, we, we plan to take a run with the Marlies. We're very proud of what Dallas has done with that group. Obviously, we loaded them up for the playoffs, and uh, they've had a great finish, and now they've got one more weekend to go before the playoffs begin, and we'll track them closely. Um, we think the year, last little bit here, we put some building blocks in place, and I think it's very easy to lose sight of that uh, when you have a disastrous finish like we did, and to lose sight of the fact that We've had, you know, put some building blocks in place. I think if you look at the forwards, going into the season, if you'd asked me what I didn't need to worry about, I would have said our second line. And then our second line was invisible for a good chunk of the year. But I still believe in that group with MacArthur, Kuhlman, and Grabowski. And I thought they all played better. Uh, obviously, Cooley got hurt, but I thought Gravel played better at the end. And I thought Mac played better at the end. On defense, we think we have a good group, uh, a good age group. We have a solid captain. Uh, I think the emergence of Jake Gardner was a revelation for all of us. So we've maybe got that quarterback on defense that most teams look for and have trouble finding. Uh, at the trade deadline, we didn't panic. We kept our assets. We have all the players that teams came after. We kept those assets, and we have them available to make hockey deals. And there will be change. So we think we have assets going into this period where we can address some of the positional needs we have. We think we've retained our assets, and we'll be in a good position to do that. So I think, again, it's hard to see a positive when you have a finish like we had, but there are some positives. There are some building blocks. There are some, you know, you see a Matt Fratton emerge. You see a, a Carter Ashton emerge. There is hope. Uh, I know this is the greatest city in the NHL, greatest fans in the NHL, and I know there's uh, 
Uh, I believe the players want to play here. I, I don't buy that argument, even though that it might be a tough place at times. I don't buy that argument. So we're looking forward to uh, a busy off season. And why is it that the highest profile team in the league so consistently falls short? Because we haven't made the right personnel decisions. Brian, given the finish to this year and your failure to get this team in the playoffs to this point, do you feel now your job is on the line? Our jobs are always on the line. That's a, if you want to be a general manager in the NHL, your job's always on the line. That's mm -hmm. It's not, it's a fact of life. If you have a chance to get um, a really good young goaltender who's not quite proven, I'm talking, for example, like a Bernier or a Lindback, would you be willing to throw in that uh, first round pick? No. Do you look for a 1B for James Reimer, or is it someone who would have some experience in that position to ensure more depth? We'll sort that out. It's a fair question. Randy was saying two of the big things you need to be improved, Brian, are conditioning and accountability. Does that go to the whole blue and white disease not being fully eradicated here yet? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't buy that. I, I. I think what Randy is saying is that this to play the style he wants this team to play, it needs to come up a level. I, I have no question with how hard the team worked. It's just not hard enough uh, to play Randy Carlisle hockey. So we have to improve in that area, but. I don't feel this team ever cheated anyone on the work ethic. You know, I don't feel that uh, we got out work regularly. Randy is saying, I think you got to to do it his way. We have to take it up a notch.